Hello everyone. Here I am going to discuss the ultra important topic that is necrosis. In this session, I am going to compare the five type of necrosis that is coagulated necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis in a comparative unique manner so that you can't forget it. You usually very frequently get a long question on necrosis. So you will be asked to define and write the gross and microscopy of all five types of necrosis that will be a gross uh, that will be a long question and sometime in the short question one of the five can be asked or you can be asked to write the differentiation between the two so we are going to cover everything about the necrosis let's start it so let's start the ultra important topic you all can see here that is necrosis so first of all i'm giving you the definition of necrosis you should understand what is necrosis define it and that then tell me the five type of necrosis that is coagulatory necrosis liquefactive necrosis caseous necrosis fat necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis you have to tell me the introduction of each of them the causes of each of them the gross of each of them and the microscopy of each of them so let's start it so before starting the necrosis there is an introduction I guess in the last session also, you may have watched my session on apoptosis. You may be knowing there are two types of cell death. You can see this is a cell. This cell is in homeostasis. In human body from head to toe, we are made up of millions of cells. And all these cells are in homeostasis. So whenever any stress is acting on the cell, the stress may be physiological, may be phys uh, pathological. Then three things happen one by one. First of all, the cell try to adopt by doing certain structural modifications inside that. So this is known as cellular adaptation in order to cope up with the stress. So cellular adaptations are there. If the stress continues, then the second thing happening is reversible cell injury. If the stress still continues, the third and the last thing is the reversible cell injury. Actually, reversible cell injury is equal to cell death. So if the stress continues, 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 the summary is that the cell will die. There are two mechanisms by which the cell will die. Either the cell can commit the suicide or the cell can commit the murder. So suicide is compared with apoptosis and the murder is compared with necrosis. So basically there are two mechanisms by which the cell can die. Apoptosis or necrosis. Whenever a person commits suicide or whenever there is a person who is murdered, in both the scenarios the person will die. But the mechanism is different. In the same way here also I am telling you apoptosis and necrosis in both of them the cell will die. But the mechanism will be different. Why I am comparing apoptosis with suicide and necrosis with murder? I will explain you that also. So let's start it. So let me tell you first of all the definition of necrosis. Here in this session we are going to cover the murder. The murder is the necrosis. The suicide is already covered. I mean the apoptosis is already covered in one of the session. You must watch that also. Watch the suicide and murder back to back the two sessions together. You will have a a better understanding if you are understanding the two apoptosis and necrosis together. So let's start necrosis. What is the definition of necrosis? So necrosis is also a type of cell death. It is a type of cell death. It is the death of cell in living, living animal. So death of cell in living animal, one of the type of cell death is necrosis. Here there is a localized area of the uh, dead tissue. Localized area of dead tissue is there followed by degradation of the tissue and there is always inflammation in contrast to apoptosis. So in apoptosis the cells shrink and uh, the cell is phagocytosized. So it is silently. There is no leakage, there is no inflammation. In contrast to that in necrosis, can you see the cell? In necrosis the cell rupture. Once the cell will rupture everything leaks out see and then inflammation is there. So here the cell rupture, the cell swells and rupture. So here first thing the cell swells, swelling is present. Then the cell rupture, the cell is rupturing, rupture is there. So because the cell is rupturing, leakage is there. You can appreciate leakage, the cytoplasm is leaking out. Since leakage is there, it is always associated with inflammation. Inflammation is always there. And in contrast to that, this is all about necrosis, I'm telling you. This is all about necrosis. In contrast to that, in apoptosis, in apoptosis, the cell do not swell. Rather, the cell shrink. The cell shrinkage is there. So, shrinkage is there. Swelling is not there. Rupture is never there. Because cell is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Rupture is never there. No rupture, no leakage, no rupture, no leakage, no inflammation. So, Whenever a person does a suicide, it's silently. Whenever the person commits a suicide, it's not like the person is taking a mic, loudspeaker and announcing I'm doing suicide. No, it's privately, it's silently, it's privately. So in the same way, there is no leakage, there is no inflammation, there is no rupture, the cell is shrinking and disappearing.